Ready to do? Yes, sir. Man, I hope I don't fuck this one up. <laughs> You're all nervous. You're all nervous. <clears throat> all right, everybody good? Everybody ready, ready, ready? In one, two, a Tosa Live podcast, the most authentic, most organic podcast out here in LA, Vegas. Yes, Let's sir. go. Host Dusko, everybody's favorite, Mr. Dylan out there. You already know, you already know. And dude, we this is one of I would say childhood dream. Oh yeah. Grew up watching. If you started YouTube years ago, Mm -hmm. you've always seen this guy on YouTube doing skits, cholo adventures, how to do this, how to be this. Eric Ochoa, but everybody knows him as Super Ego, baby. Let's exactly. go. What's up? What's up? Man. Thanks for having me, guys. Thank, Thank you, you for, for coming and making the, your way out over here. And Appreciate it, Sitting man. Sitting down with us, man. How How's life? How's everything been? Life is good. I got my health, you know, my kids, um, my soon-to-be wife. And, um, yeah, man, I'm just very grateful and taking a moment always to smell a rose or two, there you know? You go. Man. It sounds and it sounds and it seems like you're in a state of peace. Oh man, that's that's a very good way to put it. Yeah, there's a there's a lot a, a chaos sometimes that that happens mentally, but you know, Ooh. right now it seems like uh, everything is calm. Yeah. Did it take you a while to get to this position right now? Um, honestly, um, connecting more for me, like for my faith, like with God, and you know that that has helped me a lot. Um, and especially, you know, my fiance and I being on the same page. Um, it's just, it, like I said, I'm, I'm taking a step, like, you know, really smelling the roses and things you have now. Um, yeah. You're, especially especially now that you're a dad, right? You're especially just, now that I'm a dad, <laughs> yeah. bro. Because is it, is that it's what, challenging. Is that what say? Like, once you become a dad, life is so fast-paced. And then you become a dad, and you just like, boom, everything gets... Like you take a little, you downshift. You take a little mm-hmm. step. I saw, back. I saw you downshift, you, bro. You I slow, saw you downshift. <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah. I'm a dad of two. And all right, on. I had to slow down. Mm-hmm. I had to really like. All right, I can live my life recklessly. That's fine. But when it involves now my kids and them depending on me or looking up to me, it's like, all right, what kind of person do I want to be, and what kind of person do I want them to look up to? Isn't that crazy how that shift happens? That shift, I'm not saying shit, sorry, shift. (laughs) That shift happens in your life where you're just like, yo, things are about to get very real. And I hear it's different for, like, girl dads versus, like, boy dads, too. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Um, My my girl tells me about, like, her dad, you know, he had uh, three girls. And so, you know, I'm pretty sure it was kind of like, okay, cool, you know, I'm a girl dad. But then they tried one more time, he had a boy. And from that moment on, like, she told me that her dad's, like, everything changed about him. Like, he didn't want to feel, like, so, like, he wanted to work on, like, his patience, his anger and stuff like that. So I was, like, interesting, interesting. <laughs> Why are you laughing? <laughs> because it was, it's the same way. Because yeah. it's always, it's como, como si te prendes como un cerillo. One thing happens, boom, you reacting mm-hmm. off, out of feeling, not, not even of how... <clears throat> everything else and until once the action is done then everything else starts to set in it's like damn should i really have made that should i really have said that that i just said right now to this person Mm -hmm. and then now it's just like have my kids i'm like all right take a breath bro like breathe smile the roses yeah like all you gotta do is just step out take take a couple minutes take a couple hours whatever you need and that's why when you right now off the camera when you said the drive yeah. Driving too, windows down, music going. Yeah. Or even if I don't do you you sometimes you catch yourself not even playing anything on the radio or your phone? Yeah, where you kinda of go into like a little hypnosis. You're just kinda of sitting there driving, thinking about everything. Without knowing you're driving. Yeah. It's just you're driving, yeah. but you don't know you're driving. And then you're just like in the driveway, like, get us on what <laughs> you're, like, get here. you're just like, Oh shit, did I pass that red light right there? Yeah. But right. yeah, no, I mean it's it's that part, man. And to get right into this, you are, like I said, I, I grew up watching you on YouTube. Thanks, man. And 
we, Magali, I'm pretty uh, sure Ashley, we all did. Yeah. We, all, we all did. <laughs> yeah, and everybody watching it, and tuning in right now, they're going to be like, damn, we watched them on YouTube. <laughs> did yeah. all these skits. Uh, how to do this? The roundhouse kick. For even my bring parents, it back. <laughs> my parents watched it. Like my parents, my mom was like, "Oh, you who are you having tomorrow?" Uh-huh. I'm like, "Oh, Super Ego from uh, Cholo Adventure." He goes, "No way!" I was like, even my my parents know you. Like my parents are, they're pretty young. They're not that old. But uh-huh. do you even f- my parents and my they're like, "Oh my god, this and that." Do you I'm feel dope. you're like a a staple of YouTube? <laughs> like uh-huh. One of the founding fathers of YouTube in this sense? <laughs> no, not at all. Um, Cause when I was first starting, man, like I was just doing videos and you gotta remember this was like 15 years ago when I first started, there wasn't other faces that looked like mine on YouTube. It was mostly mm-hmm. like, you know, uh, the Ryan Higas, the Niga Higas, you know, like, um, who was like Shane Dawson, all these other people like Jenna Marbles, like they were like killing it. And so uh, I remember doing like the videos with like me and my friends and thinking like, I'm gonna just do videos that I feel like is relatable to me. Maybe other people will. Will relate to this that's, stuff. That's, that's the key. You know, you're Mexican. If let me just try to, you know, who put who, whose moms is also putting foil on their stove? You know, like <laughs> why why is it an inventory of pots and pans in the oven? You know what I mean? Like so, I'm like or bags or whatever <laughs> or bolsitas, man. Like we were just like efficient and and everything was like, you know, everything had a purpose. You know, right. you're gonna open up a thing of butter, it's salsa in there. But um, at the beginning, I, I, I wanted to just do that and just kind of, all right, this is, this is fun to me. This is funny. You know, like, who can relate? And it kind of built itself, like, you know, little by little. And um, I, I didn't think of it like, oh, man, I'm going to do this because, you know, one day people will, you know, I, yeah, I just did that, it because it was the fun. Goal. That wasn't the overall no, goal of, like, I was just having fun. get famous, monetize it, make money. Yeah. Like, there was. There, yeah, was there wasn't even monetizing back then. No. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you have to think about that. That that, that you didn't get paid until maybe 2011, whenever they started like coming in with like the ad program, and that's how people so were making. This was what three year, four years after. Yeah, yeah. You started in 2008, no? 2008 ish, nine ish, yeah. with the Super Ego channel, and then um, <laughs> yeah, man, you know, it's 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 been fun ever since. After after we were able to monetize and stuff, I was like, yo, we can make money off this now. <laughs> He's like, like tight. What? And I remember at the beginning, dude, there was actually people that were like, whoa, why didn't an ad just pop out? What the heck? And little by little, I was packed. They're kind of like, huh? <laughs> <laughs> like, because I said ad yes. <laughs> you know? <laughs> so, <laughs> but I was just like, hey, you know, like now, now I'm getting paid for um, having fun. So how do you, like, how does that make you feel now? Like looking back all these years later and your content, the views that it's gotten, the shares that it's gotten, like becoming that staple at that moment of YouTube, and again, every everybody that was living that that life, whether they had uncles that were cholos, whether they had moms storing pens, like how do you feel that now we're sitting at in this state of, in this I would say chapter in your life that hey you just brought to life what almost every single body was living through. You just put it in a video. Yeah. Like, how does that make you feel now? Uh, it makes me feel lucky to be in the position uh, where people, you know, like, come up and they say things. They're just like, yo, you my, you my childhood. Like, I'm, And to me, like, sometimes I feel like I don't deserve that. Like, I don't I don't care. In my, in my mind, I'm like, I, I, I don't see myself that way. Because I grew up as such a, a low, confident kid. You know, like, I, I didn't have, like, the confidence that I think like people sometimes think I have, you know, like, bro, like I look up, you're like a role model. And I'm like, stop, don't do it. Turn the other way. You know, um, and it's just cause you know, like, uh, you're building it as, as a kid. And then once you get to a point where like you start to get attention off of videos, like that kind of disrupts your mind sometimes, you know? And if, like, for me, like, I wasn't such a sure kid all the time. Like, you know, as I was growing up, like, I was always kind of like, who am I, you know? So it, it didn't get to a point where, like, as I, as I got older, I was just, like, I had to learn through, like, the mistakes and lessons and, you know, like, that, that came with them. So I know that's a very uh, <laughs> interesting answer to that, but, like, it's just for me personally, I, I get the type of praise and I'm, like, kind of like, hey, I th- thank you, I appreciate it. But, you like, people don't understand, like, how critical I am of myself, you know? 
And I'm, I'm sure that's a very common thing, but like, mm-hmm. like, yo, like every video, like I, I look back, like sometimes I cringe. I'm like, could have been better. Wearing the Obama shirt. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the, the oversized Obama shirt. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you didn't have, at least we never got tatted the, the famous F for family on our arms like everybody else. Oh, wow. Like, you guys almost did that. <laughs> at one point I was like, damn, if I do that, I'll be fucking cool, dog. <laughs> and then now I'm like, damn, thank God I, my mom would have kicked my ass if I would have done it back then. <laughs> she still does right now. If I get tatted again right now, she's just like, are you serious? Bro, yeah. don't walk into the house. <laughs> I'm like, bro, like, what are you talking about already? But um, speaking of tattoos, though, real quick, um, my mom was with somebody. He was like, um, this is like Cholito dude that did tattoos in the in the house, uh-huh. and I was like 15 at the time, and he was like, he always had like some homies always coming in. This is where I, I get a lot of my cholo Ooh, adventure okay, shit. Okay. Bro. Yeah, I, was, I was just about. I was asking, constantly like, around like cholos, mm-hmm. you know. Um, Anyways, uh, he was just like, hey, man, if you ever want me to tat you up, like, just let me know. And I'm so glad I didn't go through with this. But uh, <laughs> I was like, man, I want a Superman symbol on my chest. <laughs> and I wasn't even going to get it all big. Wait, I was going to get, like, tiny. Oh, I was, just, I was like, bro, his whole <laughs> yeah. chest? Like, yeah, damn. bro. So at 15, I almost had a, he, like, he drew it out to a little transparent paper at the time. And, you know, you just you stick a little. Up. And I was just like, nah, let's not do this. <laughs> You're man. Yeah, just right. <laughs> right now, it's like it may, it's maybe not an S anymore, but you know, once, <laughs> it once was. So that's for, where um, for a lot of you that don't know, where did you grow up? <coughs> Man, everywhere. Um, Wilmington, Compton, Paramount, Carson, um, Southgate. Yeah, <laughs> we moved around a lot, bro. You know, nah, I don't think so. Just every every city. Nah, just you know. There. Man. So I'm just everywhere in LA, that's it. So we're just a little everywhere, a little, little bit of everything, but um. And is that how you just picked up, like content as you went through it, or living through? Let me let me take it back. Let me rephrase this question. Living in these cities, moving around, how was that childhood for you? Were you just not able to establish yourself as a person in whatever school you were going to? Was this like identity crisis too? Of like, oh yeah, how do who am I going to be? What do I want to be? Like, how did that like turn out for you? Yeah, for sure. Um, it, you know, you couldn't have like a stable something, you know, stable friends or stable location. So I think a lot of times it it turned into kind of like, um, I just adapted wherever I went, Mm. you know, and I would kind of look at like how everybody would act and then I would adapt that way. So I think that's, that's where like an identity crisis comes into play because you're kind of always sitting there thinking like, you know, one, like, who am I? As you get older, because you don't really ask that when you're a kid. You, know, you don't know that. But you're just kind of like, you're adapting. And I think that's why I wanted to do like acting as I got older. Because I was like, you know, once, once I started impersonating people or be, pretending to be other things, you know, like I got a reaction, I got laughs. Yeah. And I was like, cool, I'll do this because being myself is boring. Mm. And that alone was okay, like, okay, okay. you know, putting on different masks. And, you know, sometimes that came at... Um, the expense of other people by making fun of them, you know, because I became a little class clown and I was always like joking around. And um, yeah, it wasn't until I got older and I was just kind of like, I'm, I'm tired of wearing these masks and I, I want to find that peace a little more, you know. And I think having like a family, you know, my kids and has kind of helped that for sure. But where was I moving? Is that what you asked? <laughs> like, where did you move? <laughs> so obviously you, you lived in L.A., all of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Basically, every, every city. And I'm, I'm sorry, I'm going to say this, but in the ghetto, in the ghetto areas, you know? Yeah. Especially did you pick up? Then. Did you pick yeah. up a little bit of the cholos from school? Like, that's where that's where you picked up some from school? Um, from school, my dad, my, my cholo character is like my dad. My, my dad, when he speaks English, he sounds like this a little bit, you know? Okay. So okay, that's okay. just my dad. So it sounds like when he, when he tries to speak English. You know? <laughs> yeah. did, did you live in a... Both parents play home. Like, what, what's, what's this childhood look like for you? Because I feel like not a lot of people know this. And because they don't, they haven't paid attention or really researched, like, these are things that a lot of, a lot of Hispanics, Latinos, and even generations like now, like ours, relate to you, relate yeah. to a story like yours. Because what's, what's happening right, the, right now in the world Everybody's trying to relate to somebody to figure out an answer. I'm going through this. Ah, fuck, man, I don't, I, I don't know how to maneuver. But wait, 
he already lived through it, and he's telling us how it went. So, like, for you, what would, your childhood, was it great? Was it harsh? Was it challenging? I thought it was great, man. I didn't even realize, like, we were poor until I got older, you know? Like, <laughs> it was one of those type of situations. Like, we, we made the most out of everything. I had me and my little brother. My parents did split when I was 13. Mm-hmm. And I remember at the time, I was like, oh, man, we're going to be, like, those families were like, you get two different houses, oh. two different bedrooms. I thought it was the shit at first. Yeah. And it wasn't until later where I was like, well, I want to see my dad right now. Or I want to go, you know, like, mm-hmm. yeah. and my dad was actually, he always did like graveyard shifts. He was a tow truck driver. And, um, you know, so there was just like a lot of moments where um, me and my brother were kind of like, hey, mom, uh, this isn't cool anymore. Like, you know, get back with my dad. <laughs> like, and, <laughs> and, and, and it sucked sometimes seeing like my dad try to, you're like, oh. You know, to kind of go back to those places where you see your dad try to, you know, get your mom back. And so it was it was interesting. It was interesting to watch. And uh, I think because of that, you know, like I'm in my 30s. I think because of that, I went through a lot of my 20s in and out of relationships because um, I was like, mm, no, there, there's a flaw. Ooh, that's a red flag. I'm out. And so that alone put fear in me like. I don't want to end up like my mom and dad, divorced. You know. Yeah, man, that's that's huge. It it, it, it affects you a lot. That's, yeah. t- that's and I didn't realize it affected me. <laughs> that's until, trauma. Yeah, you know, yeah. yeah. And you I find think, it you find it normal because that's how you grew up with. You know, you grew up with something mm-hmm. like that, so you find it normal. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But, and I mean, so you again, figure out and you mature. And you're like, wait, this is not how it's supposed to be. Right. Yeah. Especially like now, like in in, according to Google. Our genera- Google. Google. Uh-oh. Like our generation has the highest divorce rate because like out of high school right away, oh, that's my high school sweetheart. We had a kid. We got to get married. They get married. Yeah. Two or three years later, F that fool. F that girl. Honestly, Trauma, 90% then, is from the women though. 90% of it, the divorce comes from the women. Like their choice. Yeah, it's okay. it's the it's the so women. What you're saying is guys are pieces of shit. No, 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 <laughs> no, no, no. no. Well, no, guys, no, that's no. What no. just said no, right no. now. There he goes. Cancel. No. Nah. No, I'm almost trying to twist my words. Yo, uh, chill. Yeah. No, but it, it's just. I mean, kind of, it's piggybacking off what you just said. Like watching what Hispanics, our parents cousins aunts uncles what they had to go through and what they were like it's normal if if he screams at her it's normal if he's the one that runs the whole relationship and he's the breadwinner and she doesn't work or whatever the case is but like now that's not the case like very typical stereotypical like hispanic things yeah Yeah. i'm the man i have to win the most money i have to be the head of the household i control everything that has the machismo in in his exactly yeah until you find someone that says, ha, 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 you think so, <laughs> mm-hmm. and it's not that case. Yeah. So, like. I think it's like a balance, you know. I think it, it needs to be a definitely good balance, and, you know, that's why it's very important to to choose your partner. Make sure you guys are on the same page about different things. Even if you say a sentence like, oh, so if we have kids, and, you know, this situation happens, like, how do we both react? You know, and I think that's very healthy to do because, you're pushing forward with this person as a teammate. You know, you can't yeah. have any like, Mm-mm, I'm not going to, you know, or you know, on whoever side, you know. Yeah. Um, but there's also like that challenge to between each other. Like you guys challenge each other in the dating phase, you know, you guys move in together and there's that like that fight. But you need that fight. Yeah. It's mm-hmm. good. You need someone to hold up a mirror in front of your face and be like, hey, listen, sometimes you have an attitude problem. And sometimes whenever I talk, you cut me off. And then whenever, you know, you get upset, like you storm off and then we don't have, you know, this doesn't, you know, so there's like little things that I think have to happen. But the most important thing is to come right back and solve it. You know, you guys become problem solvers together. And I think that's, that's what a good relationship um, should look like, I guess. I mean, and I've said this before, at the end of the day is you two against the problem. It's not. Yeah, yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, it's you two against the problem. It's just not. It's not who's right and who's wrong. Like, it's you two against the problem, and you just have to figure it out. So, mm-hmm. so I think a good question to ask you now is: <laughs> Yeah, we always go, we uh, always ask this question. Gonna, I think it's a really good one. Right. And what's your definition of love? 
<laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. The computer. Give him some water. Give him some water. Give him some water. Hang on. <laughs> Open the door for that lighter. That lighter. Uh, definition of love. Oh my God. Hey, Google. What? No. <laughs> no, that's. Um, let me make sure my phone didn't go off. Ah, oh, man. It's putting your selfish needs aside um, for the well being of others. I think has to do with it as a part of it. Um, when I see my kids, um, I, you know, I, I didn't think I was going to be one of those dads as soon as like my kids were born, like I was going to cry, but man, you know, I just heard the first cry and I was like, <laughs> I'm sitting there ugly crying and I recorded it too. And I'm like, <laughs> but that moment right there, it's it just, I remember feeling this like, selflessness like from here on out it's whatever they want We're like like not whatever they want but it's like it's all about them and and I'm putting them first so I think a lot of what love is is that sacrifice of putting others in front of you I like that that's See, good Google was not going to give you that no, no definitely not <laughs> but chat no. GPT no <laughs> Hey, ChatGPT is uh, up and coming, bro. We, we do have one more question to ask, though. Oh, uh, cool. Now that you're talking about relationships. Ready. Do you think it's a 50-50 or it's 100 and 100% that each partner gives? Um, I'm going to give you option C. It's 110-110. Ooh, okay, okay. Um, Why is that? Why is that? Uh, because you both have to really be in it. Um, mm -hmm. It can't be, if you do the 50, I feel like you kind of like, you know, oh, okay, well, you know, where's your part, you know? Um, it should definitely be, like, try your very best to, like, it's basically like a, kind of putting yourself, like, aside, too, you know? Um, yeah, I think it's that. You know? I like that. I like that. Did, did you find yourself, like, throughout your journey of outside of the social media, like, having to check yourself regularly? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. At the beginning... Um, Damn. Yeah, let's talk about that because your videos were not just like normal <laughs> videos and getting a couple hundred, 10, 20, like yeah. they were getting millions of views. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everybody sharing. Like, again, I, I mostly from me and my mom, <laughs> my family. <laughs> we nah, made 10, yeah. 20 different accounts. <laughs> just, it, like, it's me and my cousin yeah. were like, bro, that, how to be a gangster, like roundhouse kick. Mm. <laughs> so, you know, roundhouse <laughs> kick. Bring uh. it back. All these, yeah. like everything, but how you said they're characters. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because people hear me talk like right now, and they're just like, "Hey, bro, you don't sound like the way you're doing." It. He's like, a little bandana, yeah, bro. Though. It's a character, dog. <laughs> yeah, like people don't see you outside doing a uh, cholo wars and no one else You know what I'm mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> No one sees that. <laughs> Maybe after we do another tutorial, we'll bring it back. <laughs> Dylan knows how to do this. <laughs> But it's a character. There's a person behind the character. And I, you said earlier, you weren't the most confident person. Yeah. You're, you weren't the com most confident in yourself and what you're doing. And you, be, you created this character and everybody's seeing you as untouchable. Most confident person out there. Look at him doing all these videos, smiling, laughing. But who was, who was Eric outside of? This character. I don't know. Bro. No. <laughs> I, don't know. I, was, I was like, I was like, damn, Dio. I'm like, damn, no more, no more. No, 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 um, Eric was, uh, was someone that was excited to see comments that, uh, that got the result he wanted. I was seeing people laugh. I was seeing people excited for it. And I was like, tight. Okay, cool. I'm doing something right. Um, people were enjoying uh, this character that I'm putting on. Um, so it's, it was that, like, I, I, I felt that excitement and, and I like to see it as like an art, a, a creativity and, you know, testing my acting chops and like, cool. I'm the, the, the last thing you want to do is like suck at a fucking character, <laughs> you know, you're doing something and then be like, Oh fuck. But a lot of it came from like real experiences in my life, you know, being around a bunch of like, actual cholos you know and, and they used to like jump people in my backyard bro <laughs> you know they're sitting there counting to 13 and i'm sitting there what i'm like hey 
he's counting really slow. Like, you know, <laughs> he's, he's there taking notes. He's like, he <laughs> so 13 10, seconds it is. Yeah. <laughs> so it's just like little things like that. Yeah. That, um, that was just, I was happy to, to do. And, um, uh, it made me happy, bro. Like it, it, it made me really happy to, to see people happy, you know, with the content. Now, yeah. now that you say about the comments, like you wanted to see people laugh, you wanted the, the positive comments. Yeah. How did you handle the negative comments? Because deleted haters, them. There's I blocked them. No. <laughs> <laughs> You're done. <laughs> Back then, that's how you canceled people. <laughs> no. <Reported. Nah. laughs> um, the way I would handle that, though, man, like, um, I'll be honest, like, at the beginning, like, it hurt, you know? Yeah, and people, it, it people, you. people say things that, like, you weren't even, <laughs> fucking cruel, you didn't bro. even know about yourself, you know? Yeah. Like, hey, bro, why, why, why you got them holes on your face? I'm like, what? I'm like, oh, my acne scars. Like, oh, damn. They went in on me. You know, so you're sitting there just, like, trying to hold it back. Like, ha, ha. Like, YouTube has no filters, homeboy. Ha, ha. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I know. No filters then. <laughs> and I remember, like, people just, you know, uh, acting like it didn't phase me. I'm just driving. Ha, ha, ha. Holes in my <laughs> You know? I'm crying. Yeah. <laughs> so there's just little things like that that you become, actually, you, you get thicker skin for. Mm, you know? Exactly. And... That's that actually helped me grow like grow up the most, like hearing specific things about me, my own insecurities that people would say about me. And I'm like, damn, like you bro. You think people are, can't see this, but yeah, they're pointing it out, like yeah, everything, big nose, big like big anything, hair, right? Every, like, every little thing that what's that thing back next to your nose, bro? You got a bug? I'm like, <laughs> it's a mole, fool. It's my birthmark. My mom loves it, bitch. No, you know, like. So there's little things like that, bro, that, yeah, like, definitely you grow up hearing and then you see them in the comments and you're like. It's because even, yeah. like, Hispanics, bro, like, we think we're. Oh, yeah, that's what I mean, bro. Yeah, you know? Yeah. Ay, mijo, estás enamorado. Estás bien gordo, mijo. Estás llenito. Like. Ah, estás bien flaco. No te dan de comer en la casa. Estás bien. No tengo dinero. <laughs> they just go in on you and it's like all right maybe we can handle it through our like our family our, our right our it's a little more circle. intimate with them but when, it's when the world like, people say it oh, man. you're like man i quit <laughs> but nah. it, it, it's, it's sad it's it's kind of sad to say because now like a lot of influencers are coming out like man i struggle with this when i was mm. growing up or when i was doing this and that it's like all right like one biggest thing is like, all right, are you confident in yourself? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I am. All right, can you handle negative comments if they don't come your way? I think I can. Mm -hmm. And then you get tested. Boom, you get yeah. your first one. Oh, not that bad. Boom, you get your second one. Um, I don't know, third, fourth, and then they keep coming. Like, all right, well, how do yeah. we handle this? Mm -hmm. And I would say it's your support system. Who's actually there? Supporting True. you and reassuring you that, hey, you are fucking great. You are funny. You are amazing. You are beautiful. Yeah, your birthmark does make you beautiful. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Thanks, man. Damn. <laughs> I'm like, bro, you're, you're hitting on him now? <laughs> God damn. Okay. He's like, don't worry, bro. We, <laughs> we got you. We got, we're the support system. Appreciate here. it, man. But throughout this journey, what, what did your friend group look like? What was your support system during that time? Man, they they are the reason why I'm still doing what I do, you know. Um, even through the, the obstacles, adversities of of anybody talking, you know, it um it was it was a humbling experience. But you're right, that support system is is so key. Um, my boy Alex, uh, he plays Sleepy Brown. Um, he's just he's one of my favorite people, man. Like he's just he's such a loving dude. Off, you know, like when we're when we're filming off camera, everything. Like he's just such a loving dude. You're, you're, I would say you're like your brother. How how does how does that work? How everybody knows him as Sleepy Brown, right? Yeah, yeah. But believe you guys know each other outside of your character names, right? Like, Absolutely, yeah, yeah. Alex, like I was saying, he's is um, he's one of like the most loving dudes I know. You know, very very sweet and um. He's been one of the first to be like, you know, as soon as like a comment or something like he knows it bugs me, you know, I'm just like, man, I hate that they're saying like that wasn't as funny as the last video or, you know, he's just like, where? It's like, man, fuck that fool. He's like, he doesn't even have a picture, fool. I was just like, yeah, yeah, fuck that fool. 
He's like, fool, you can thumbs down his comment. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so there's just like, um, there's like this like sunshine to, to Alex, you know. And then there's uh, my boy Peter. Yes, I wait. Man, he's, he's just, he's such a funny guy. Mm -hmm. He's the reason why I started making videos or had the confidence to make videos. Um, back in like 2002. No, I don't know. Bro, not even. No, yeah. <laughs> Dylan was burning born. No, I, was I, mean, <laughs> I was not that. 2000, I was born in 99. I was born like three years ago. Bro, yeah. So I was making home videos before YouTube was a thing. Uh, <laughs> and I, I remember uh, <clears throat> in high school, um, <laughs> my my homie, I, I met this guy named Peter, and he was like showing off these videos of him doing like Star Wars shit. And I was just like, this guy did this? Like what? You made like a movie? I remember thinking like that, that, that was a trip. And, uh, like, we were in drama class and whatnot. We all, we all like, knew each other. Um, and our drama teacher, you know, like, connected us. And I remember, like, meeting him and being like, bro, like, if you ever, like, need somebody. Found out we were neighbors. Like, you know, like, shit, like, invite me over. He's like, yeah, bro, come on over. And he has, like, this rasp to him, you know, like, he's like, hey, bro, what the fuck? Like, come on over, bro. We'll fucking shoot some shit, dude. Like, it'll be fun, bro. And it's funny because, you know, like, he looks white. But he's, like, one of the most Mexican homies I have, you know. <laughs> He's like, ah, fuck that shit. You know, he's always, he's always, like, really energetic, and he speaks a lot with his hands, you know? It's so, so smooth that he communicates yeah. with the hands. Like, yeah. It's coming out through the mouth like that talking, yeah. but the hands it's, is where the he energy have to say shit. is he's so just big. Like, it's like, it saying. takes up the room a little bit, like, what the fuck, bro? Are you fucking kidding me? You know, so that's my thing, right? Like, I do impressions of people, right? So, like, that's one of my favorite ones to do. And so he was just like, like bro, we'll fucking it, you know? So him being a part of my clique, being a part of, like, everything, you know, like, was... Um, kind of like that. Um, it was like Alex, him, my boy Tim. They were in in a very weird way, like kind of like father figures for me, older brothers, you know. So, yeah. Did Did you guys like per help each other, sort of like protect each other through like to not get into bad stuff, like throughout that? Like, absolutely, yeah. Uh, so I didn't I didn't drink until I was twenty one. Believe it or not, like I I had a like a beer once with like a Theo and then. My mom got mad, but, um, but as I got older, like I, I was kind of like, like a little straight little arrow, you know, I was just like, I'm not supposed to drink, blah, blah. So I became a, a bartender actually, but, um, I'll get into that in a bit, but I, um, yeah, bro. Like I, I, I was like, follow the rules. Everything seemed like, yeah. you know, appropriate. And then, uh, what was your question? <laughs> <laughs> but, um, what, 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 what kept you in that path though? Obviously. Yeah. Like. You oh. you lived in all these different neighborhoods that any if you tell any random oh yeah yeah, 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 yeah. like oh, like oh you're gonna end you're if you live in this neighborhood you're meant for only this surrounded yeah. by and I think ghetto, you know what I think because my mom's voice was always in my head like you know you don't do you don't do drugs because you're gonna look like that homeless man over there you know you don't do you know you don't tag up the walls and you're gonna look like this you yeah. know, so th there was a lot of that fear and then you know we grew up in the church too my my grandfather had a com uh, a church in Compton. And um, I, I just remember thinking, like, I don't want to go hell. I don't want to go to hell. I don't want to go to hell. You know, like, as a little kid, <laughs> yeah. you know. So, it, and that was an older style of, you know, yeah. thinking, too. Oh, yeah, like, kind of, like, they put that fear, like, you know. But, um, yeah, man, all of that, all the way until, like, I was 21, you know, like, not drinking. Everyone was, like, very, you know, like, my friends were actually very protective of it. That's what I was going to say. My friends were protective of that because I remember one time we were at a party. We were, like, 19, 20. And it's, um, and I remember, like, people you know, whenever they find out someone isn't drinking at a party, you know, what do you do? Oh, you nah, make them nah, drink. You, Take you, a shot, yeah, bro. Yeah, what yeah, do you, yeah. come on, let's go drink, blah, blah, blah. You know, so I'm like, you're a you bitch, know? bro, come right. on. Yeah. But my, like, my boys, like, my close homies was like Peter, Tim. Um, they, um, they were very quick to see other people try to influence me. And they're like, hey, yo, 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 back up, back up. He doesn't drink. Like, back up. And yeah. that to me, I was like, I'll be the friend that I'll take a shot man, for you. you know? I'll, ta yeah. I'll take your shot. I'll take your so shot. So he's one of those that, <laughs> you know, if we drink one, fool, drink one, what yeah. the fuck are you doing? <laughs> ah, man, come on, one, one, for real? I'm like, yeah. oh, my ass. Okay, never mind. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, but eventually I, um, I grew up and became an alcoholic. After that, <laughs> one. 21 years of not drinking, <laughs> six months of drinking. <laughs> Let me tell you what happened, though, bro. Like, I was working at a restaurant. Um, it was at a CPK, California Pizza Kitchen. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, then, too, I, was, I started, like, at 19, uh, 20. Then I hit 21. And the manager at the time was like, yo, Eric, um, ne next week's your birthday, huh? And I was like, mm-hmm, yeah. I was just a server, right? Yeah. 
And she goes, okay, cool. I need someone in the bar. So uh, next week I'm going to put you at the bar. I was like, what? Like, Wait. Oh, bro, I was so confused. I was like, oh, I, I don't. She's like, yeah. Okay. And she just walked away. I was like, I don't know anything about drinking. Like, I, don't I don't even know, know what a Bud Light is. Like, yeah, what the bro. Fuck? <laughs> I didn't, you know, any type of cocktail. So I was like a little nervous. And I was just like, they threw me in there and they gave me a Rolodex, which a Rolodex is a, uh, a wheel of like papers and <laughs> with information on Where, it. Where? you see how Back, back when uh, contacts were, were just <laughs> you know, on paper. So anyways, I was just back there. And this is when I made the decision like, okay, maybe, maybe I should try some alcohol. Because that first day... I remember somebody, you know, sitting up at the bar and there's like this etiquette to like bartenders, you know, like they're very kind of like little know-it-alls. They kind of have like, oh, what's up? And, you know, me being a little with actor. With the towel, though, you know. Yeah, with the towel, just what's up, that, yeah. Is that what you want to try? You're I've, talking? I've tried that before. You're not even paying, you're not even looking at them. They're just like, <laughs> you know. So you have that whole entire thing going. And so, you know, I, I tried to embody that. You know, it's kind of like, what's going on, man? How you doing? And he's just like, this dude's like, hey, yo, let me get a, let me get a Cadillac margarita. I was like, for sure. For sure. And I <laughs> went back to, and, and really quietly, like without him looking, I was like, Cadillac margarita, C, 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 C. It wasn't there. Oh, fuck. So I was like, fuck. damn. I was like, all right, I'm going to get tequila. <laughs> I grabbed the martini glass. I put tequila in it, some lime juice. And I, uh, I had the, the, the rim salt and I brought it to him. And bro, this is how like. How, how proud I was in the, in the moment. I was just like, here you go, bro. He goes, this is a Cadillac margarita? And I went, oh, you said Cadillac. Oh, bro. And I, just, I turned around and I was like, fuck. <laughs> so I just, I put more tequila in it. <laughs> I found a regular ass glass. And then I just put some ice and I was like, maybe this is it. And I gave it back to him and the dude took a sip and he goes, oh, shit. I was like, is that cool? He's like, I hooked it up, bro. And it's like, cool. <laughs> and I was like, that's it. I have to try alcohol now. Like, I, I can't do this. Which, if you don't know. If you drunk, you wouldn't notice, yeah. you know? No. It's, it's because now, like, it, it doesn't, honestly, <laughs> you can ask for whatever alcohol drink at a bar, at a restaurant. And if you taste a lot more alcohol than an actual, what it's supposed to be, you're just like, I full hooked it up, dog. You're not going to complain about extra. Oh, never. Oh, definitely a not, A double, bro. triple. Maybe that was a oh, triple. supposed to be juicing this? Really? Yeah. Nah, we're good. Yeah, bro. Damn, so you had a confidence right there. You, what, was, you what have, was your first drink, though? What was your yeah, first drink? Yeah, what was that? My first drink I had was like, um, oh, it may have been Bucanas, bro. Oh, oh you chose, which you was chose Irish whiskey. Which was a Hell tough no. one to start what off with. What is it, Bucanas and Cranberry? Uh, uh, no, it was... Um, Bucanas off the bottle. It was uh, orange juice. Bucanas and oranges. We were like in Vegas. Were you listening to some corridos at that yeah. time? Too? <laughs> <laughs> He's like, yeah. He's like, yeah. So nah, but although, yeah. Uh, uh, Camacho at that time for you just arremangues yeah. a la verga. Sheesh. But yeah. it, it was it back. I mean, still right now, but like even like back then too. Like, bucanas is is a, one of the primary that everybody's like. This is bomb ass. Don't say back then because I don't know shit. Uh, <laughs> you were still like, diapers. Like, like, don't, don't say back then. You were burning even learning how to walk. Stop, dude. <laughs> Don't make us feel old right now, okay? <laughs> this is this is probably gonna be the only episode you're ever gonna make me feel old. You just said you're li literally old. How old, how old What's the age gap? How old do you think I am? So 40. you're. I told on my birthday, so you're 23. Yeah. I'm 23, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I'm 27. Yeah, okay. I literally coached him in high school for soccer. Yeah. Oh wow. Yeah. That's I wanted to get I down know. with him one day. There you go. So yeah, you're yeah. like 95. 95. Okay. I'm 95, baby. Cool, cool, cool. Yeah, me too. Me too. Me too. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> don't, don't, don't believe what Google says. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Google no, no, no. has a we'll lot just of cut out the part where he says he's in the sturdies. Well, well, false so information out pages, there. You can always like, you know, you can always manipulate. Yeah. It. <laughs> when people find out my age, though, they they, they they trip out sometimes. Just kind I of tripped like, out. What? I tripped out. We did. We're like, we tripped out. We're nah, like, no fucking way. That's not way. true. We're like, nah, this shit's fucked up somewhere. Like, uh, <laughs> so what kind of treat? What kind of tea do you drink? What do you? What do you do to stay this? Nah, bro. We age well, bro. Just let, just let Latinos, like we, we age, then, Latinos no. we age well, bro. No, we just drink your water, your, your frijoles, yeah. That's bien. Um, smashed or frijoles? Oh, I like mine um, definitely smashed, yeah. Why are you okay. laughing? <laughs> She's Why like, you know, when you put it on the torta, you know what I mean? Like, Oh, oh yes. Hey, what? Well, okay. What they call it? Refried? Refri yeah. <laughs> what's, that, what's the preference of carne? Um, shit, anything. I like... Um, I like we go to the taco spot right now. What are you ordering? 
Oh, if they have um, like birria, like oh, fuck, fuck Ooh, with birria yeah, a lot right now. We 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 had a uh, Teddy's tacos just on, and yeah, he brought us a whole uh, yeah entree of what was it birria tacos quesadilla yeah oh, fire, bro. Bolita. Bolita. yeah he, was, he basically said motherfuckers you guys are hungry you guys haven't eaten in days and here we go <laughs> yeah we're like nah we haven't for it was the first time i was quiet in like minutes bro i was just i was just gobbling mm-hmm. those freaking things <laughs> up i was like this is good man how, how old are your are your babies right now they're three three yeah, twins two little boys when you found out you're gonna be a dad how, what's the feeling, man? Were you scared? Were you excited? So we had a uh, we had a miscarriage the first time, um, and she wasn't like super long, but uh, it was like after like six weeks, and you know we had gone through all the emotions, really excited and whatnot, and that happened, and then uh, we tried again, and um, because she was uh, considered high risk, uh, we went in a little sooner, um, maybe like at the five week mark to go kind of do an ultrasound, and. You know, the lady was just sitting there kind of just like, okay, I'm just going to put this cold cream here, and you know, and I'm sitting there and I'm recording the entire thing, and you see like this, it's it's so dope to see like a little this, yeah. like a little heartbeat, you know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. I was like, oh man, like this is beautiful. It's crazy. And then just like off to the little distance, because it looks like she's going through space in there, <laughs> she's like <laughs> looking at the stars. She just made know? that, uh, what is it, Gal- 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 Galacta again? Galaga. Gallagher? Is Gallagher? Gallagher? Sorry. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> See, even I know that, <laughs> that bro. That's Macanita that you start, you're just shooting. Oh, yeah. But when she's going through, you're just like, what is that right there? Hmm. Yeah, that's and that's exactly like. kind of that moment. Cause but, she, like, for girls, they know everything. Oh, my God, that's the... I'm like, yeah. what? Uh-huh. <laughs> you, you can make that up there? I'm just, I'm just yeah. saying quiet. I'm, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to learn here. I'm trying to learn yeah. here. <laughs> I'm like, I'm trying to it's learn one here. of the most beautiful and weirdest things <laughs> at the same damn time. Oh, yeah. Because you're looking at it just like, I have zero clue what's happening, but yeah. this is amazing. Yeah. So they went through one. You saw one heartbeat. Saw one heartbeat. She slid the little thing over, and she was just like, um, is there a history of twins in your guys' family? And I was like, my mom's a twin. <laughs> you know, and they're like, all right, well, it looks like uh, you got two for the price of one. And we see the little heartbeat. Oh, damn. And that little moment, I was like. What? He's like, fuck, I'm in trouble now. Like, I'm going to have what? to work twice as hard now. Like, that's crazy, you know? <laughs> and we don't know, like, the gender yet or anything like that. You know, it's like the baby, so I'm just kind of like, oh, shit, like, this is crazy. Like, for two? And I had, like, a like I had like a condo spot. Like, I was kind of just chilling. I was like, cool, we can be here for a little bit. But as soon as I found it was two, I was like, man, we need to pack up and leave. Like, <laughs> fuck. <laughs> <laughs> I got to get the fuck yeah. out right now. So that's, that's kind of the first reaction to everything. And um, was it? Yeah. how the person, the person that Eric was at that moment, to when you found out being a dad, I'm assuming there's two different. There, there has to, there was a change. Yeah, one had more sleep versus this one. <laughs> um, less eye bags. Oh, perfect. Um, less daddy weight. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what was your question though? So, like, right before you you found out that you're having twins. You you really said you, you shared with us that you guys went through through a moment, but like what? Did, who does Eric become now that like hey like there's two people that is coming into my life and that depend on me? Yeah. What kind of what kind of persona was that? That's a good question. Um, Eric becomes <laughs> speaking third person now. <laughs> Eric becomes somebody that um, needs to stop bullshitting. You know, he um, he kind of just starts grinding out a lot more. Um, I was very lucky that, you know, I make content for a living and then COVID hit too. You know, this is like my kids were born in 2020. Mm. So um, I was lucky enough to have like a good amount of like brand deals come in too that I was like working and, you know, making money off of um, to work at home and then at the same time help Vanessa out with, with the two boys. Um, cause it was, it was very, very difficult for her to like, her mental health was like, and I'm over here, like not understanding anything. Like people were just like, oh, well, you know about postpartum depression, right? And I'm like, what? I'm like, I feel fine. They're like, no, not you, dummy. <laughs> her. He's like, I feel fine. I'm like, <laughs> I was like, oh, you know, he's like, yeah, she just had like a life change. Like her body just changed. Like, it's not the same as it used to be. Like, mm-hmm. you know, the cicatrices you know like everything is is, is gonna be very different for her so you got to make sure you're you're very 
uh, nurturing and, and caring towards her. And, um, you know, if, if anything, give her way more love right now. And I was like, shit, easy. I can do that, you know. But there's some days that it was, it was just tough. You know, like I was having a day. She was having a day. You know, I'm like, what's wrong? <sighs> Nothing. I'm like, that doesn't help. Oh, you're you in know trouble. what I mean? You're yeah. in trouble. Yeah, what did I do? Nothing, you're in trouble. You know, so there's, but she's actually very, very cool and very communicative of, um, you know, how she feels. Um, so, yeah, uh, the very beginning is just, I was very much locked in, daddy. And also, it's your first time being a dad. Like, you don't know any of the rules. There's no, you know, I there's some books here and there, but I can't read. You know what I mean? So, it's just, it becomes one of those things where I'm like, man. Did you I, learn how to read to read these books? To be I eventually dead? got to it. Yeah, I started so, with Doctor Doctor Seuss's. <laughs> yeah, I, I was like, yeah, yeah. I was like, oh, okay, this one has the pop up. Good, good, good. Green eggs and ham. Sam, yeah. I am okay. No, because again, like there's <laughs> there's books out there that guide you, but it's like how Nipsey Hussle said, man, the best teacher in life is your own experience. Yeah, I'm not gonna teach you how to be a great dad when you're gonna. Teach your kids how you want to. Yeah. But then everything else comes, right? Like judgment. How, how to do this and said, do this, do this, do this. But you got to start with that sentence. I want to be a great dad. Mm -hmm. And you got to believe it. And what are you going to do to achieve that? You know what I mean? Um, because I think asking that question, like, do I want to be a great dad? Do I want to be a good dad? Do I want to be an average dad? Mm -hmm. I think really puts into perspective, like, oh, man, how much am I going to put in you know, for myself? Um, you know, to, to raise kids, yeah. you know, cause I think like other people kind of just think like, Oh, I'm just, I oh, just work and let my, my girl do everything you know, about like, but like I said, it's, it's a teamwork thing. Like you, you both have to be on the same page and you know, there, there's times where like, you know, me, luckily for me and my girl, like, like she, she has taken on the role of like house mom and she takes care of everything, but that doesn't mean, you know, that I, I get too comfortable. Like yeah. if I see she's tired, I'm like, I'll, I'll go and wash the dishes, you know, I'll go and I actually love cooking. So I'll be cooking some stuff. She's like, Oh my God, like, what is this? What did you do? What? You know, you so a how to cook too. Yeah. Yeah. I know. Hey, you, there's some videos that I've done, like, you know, how to cook some, <laughs> some random TikTok shit. Videos. Yeah. <laughs> but it, yeah. you've been in the social media, you've been in content creation for a while now, right? Yeah. You're, you're apart from YouTube. Like there's more to, the persona of Eric and the characters of Eric that went beyond what everybody once knew. You had other projects. Mm -hmm. So how do you stay so motivated, though, like continuing content creation for so long? Um, back to, like, support group, like my friends, and then um, seeing all these little kids, you know, with their little TikToks and whatnot, you know? Um, it, does, it does fire you up, you know, to see other people out there are seeing, like, something that, uh, catches your attention which at first you reject yeah. and then there's like a moment where like oh well maybe oh, okay that was funny oh okay i like it you know what i mean so mm -hmm. what i'm talking about is like tiktok yeah i remember tiktok being a thing and i'm being like oh, it was just musically first right like oh and it, it started turned into musically, yeah. and i was just like and they're just doing the little my like, like the renegade the, yeah the renegade. The renegade. yeah the fucking you know so I'm you like, did, the, did you do the renegade <laughs> no wait, you did the renegade <laughs> Oh and my god! We we're in presence of a big TikTok star too, <laughs> yeah. and that's uh, you know, like everybody that started on TikTok that blew up. Hey, they they did no. great. They do. I hope great. I don't run into that video. Uh, but here, we, but here we are, and there is TikTok stars, and then there is the YouTubers that started way before all this, and that's what, like, I think one of the things that that we say now, and a lot of it, everybody agrees, you can blow up on TikTok. But to blow up in other social media platforms, yeah, you have to have something really special. Mm -hmm. You have to mm -hmm. be really special. But you've been in content creating, filming for 13, no, fifteen. Yeah, fifteen years. Fifteen yeah. years. Mm -hmm. And even before that, like um, I was in like improv acting classes. I did like theater and musicals and so you in were high drama school. In high school no? I was in drama in high school. Mm -hmm. You know, man, you yeah, you yeah, were yeah. doing everything. <clears throat> yeah. Up but to answer your question, I mean, like, um, there's there's more to, it's not just, like, all, everybody else and the TikTokers that, you know, yeah. keep me, like, from wanting to do more, like, or continue to do it. It's because um, there's still more that I haven't achieved or, like, the big, the, there's, like, the bigger goals. And I feel like everything else has been, like, little setup goals towards it. And me having kids right now, like, was my main focus. Like, I'm like, okay, let me help throughout, like, this little toddler stage. Now that they're three, almost four, like, you know, they're like, okay, cool. So, like, I'm trying to get back into it. 
I'm getting back into my uh, Instagram stuff and, you know, um, I told myself one more year of Cholo stuff and that's it. Cause I was like, man, you know, you get burnt out a little bit sometimes, yeah. you know, if I want to take myself serious as an actor, you know, like there's other things that I have to try to and step out of. Um, but yeah, right now, like I'm, I'm just very focused on doing the little things, the little goals to set me up for the bigger ones, which will be film, which will be TV and, um, hopefully directing, you know, like one of one of I don't want to put out my goals right now because, you know, they say, don't, you know, keep a, keep that shit to yourself. But well, there's a lot. Speaking into existence. It's oh, I've already done that. Yeah. In the mirror. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. But there's it, one of the reasons why I don't say it out loud, especially in front of other people, is because sometimes you get that reaction from other people that it's like, wow. And that's, you know, sometimes people are like, yeah. And you <laughs> get that little instant gratification where you're like, oh, wait, save that. Save that for, mm-hmm. you know, for later. What is, what's the saying? The ones that talk more do less. Yeah. So it's like if you there's there's one thing of speaking into existence, and there's yeah. one thing of just talking and saying that you're gonna do it, but you don't do shit at the end. I think of what the I'm day. trying to say is like the affirmation wise, right? Like I will do this, I will attain this, I will achieve this. That's more at a yeah. personal level, like yeah, you alone in your yeah. room type of stuff. And, but it, it's like making your moves quietly. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, because what what's that saying? Be careful who you share good news with. Yeah. Be yeah. careful who you share your goals with. That's it. Because the people you share it with may not be the most supportive and the ones that reassure you. Like, mm-hmm. hey, you know what? Go ahead and go go into filmmaking. Go into acting. Go Because yeah. there's going to be some that, like, all right, they've seen you through through these stages. It's like, ah, that's it. Nah, no, no, I said. Yeah. And then once you make it or you're doing it, then I, I always believed in you, bro. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it's like, nah, man, I can't. These type of people I can't allow in my life anymore because, you know, it, it having a close circle, it our life depends on that. Like how we wake up, how we move through the week, how we move through our life. Like, are we surrounded by love or are we surrounded by envy? Yeah. And that's what's like hard to identify because sometimes envy comes in a, a portion of love. Like, oh yeah, bro, I support you. Then boom, those are the same ones that. Yeah. If you have to go do this, or the same ones that are not going to let you, because come and do this instead, bro. Bro, that's so important what you just said. That's that's very, very key. And I and I think to anybody out there watching, too, like, if you can relate to anything he just said, find yourself a new group of people. You know what I mean? Like, try to be around people that are more supportive, more aligned with, like, what you fuck with, things that you love to do, you know? Um, everybody can speak negative on anything, but... If you're able to find specific people that even just a little like, hey, bro, that's dope. Like, good for you. Keep it going. Yeah. You know, um, be around those people a little more. You know, they you have no idea how just one positive comment a day, like things like that, or when you're working and someone else sees your vision where they're just like, dude, that's awesome. And then sometimes if they, they want to share it, like, dude, how can I help? Yeah. You know what I mean? It's crazy because sometimes no. that comes from people you've never even known in your life. No. And it oh. comes from the people you least expect it. Yeah. And you don't get that reaction. From Sometimes you hate them at first. Oh, you know, yeah. you, you ever notice that? Like, um, I'm, so I'll tell you guys a, a story about like a, a friend I met in 10th grade. We were in PE. Uh, ninth grade. Um, oh, man, I bet I met them both in PE. Hang on. Let me see which one. <laughs> um, but I just remember like this dude, you know, he was just like talking and, you know, he, um, he started having like this like very loud voice. I kind of like swagger to him like, blah, blah, yeah, man, you know what I'm talking about, blah, blah. And I was just like, who is this dude? Like, what the hell? And then I was just like, you know, and then one day this dude was just like, hey, man, you know, like, bro, there's bitches up in this uh, drama class. Like, I know you like, I, lo- I know you like acting, you know, it was a while ago. And he's just like, bro, like, you know, let's, let's, and I was like, who is this guy? That's my boy Tim, Timothy Laghetto. Like, <laughs> oh, he's you know? always, but he said bitches. Yeah. So we go, <laughs> he said man. bitches. This is before, yeah. yeah, yeah <laughs> but yeah. I remember thinking, like, I never would have thought, like, like that was gonna be like one of my closest like friends. You know, such a such a great friend. And the same thing with my boy Peter. You know, I met him in ninth grade PE, and I remember thinking, like, who's this white guy that that, that keeps like saying all these. Sp- Spanish slurs. No, me la pelan con canela, pan and canela. And I was just like, <laughs> who is this guy? He was like, who, who taught this white boy Spanish? You know, like, and as I got to know him, then we started doing videos together. And I was just like, but it's funny how, like, I, I hated them at first. I was like, who? Wait, was that El Cieguito? El Ciego. El yeah, Ciego, Peter, El Ciego, yeah, El Ciego. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, so it's funny how you meet specific people. Yeah. Alex, the same thing. You know, I met him in 10th grade. 
um, in 10th grade, I was kind of like the guy that a lot of the girls would kind of hang out with, you know, like mm. it was homeroom. And so a lot of the girls were like, so I'm like, what'd you do this weekend? <laughs> You've never kissed someone, huh? You're stupid. And, then, and were those the same ones that had their picture with their friends in the front? Of the oh, bro, in their, in their folders? <laughs> oh, yep. Yeah. Had their like, you know, they had a, you know, random ass people, Adrian Ethier from like the Dodge. You're like, what? what? How do you, you know? Oh, did they just put, <laughs> they had a white paper. They put uh-huh. the tape behind it and they just stuck it on and, yeah. oh my God, I'm going to put you on my binder. So I yeah. You with me. Oh, you made it. Yeah, you were. Oh, I, you I even had my. Legit. That was a screensaver of the days. <laughs> yeah. That was or a screensaver of the days. That was. If you're going to do the, oh, let me do a ringtone real quick. Shut up, shut up, shut up. Let me record this. <laughs> All right, cool talk. <laughs> we're good. And it's just like, <laughs> what? There's so much shit back then that, like, now everybody talks about it or, like, make content out of it. But it's mm-hmm. like, fuck, we lived through this shit, dog. Mm-hmm. Like, through the binders, through taking photos with your friends and going to an actual studio in the mall. Yeah, that was that was the the selfies of, of back then, you know. Yeah. Get that to, backdrop to going. Kinda, Actually, did that. Huh. Yeah. <laughs> she still does it. To That's tight. Piggyback about what you said about um, the, the people that you hate. Oh yeah, yeah. Beginning, yeah. that was him. I hated. I'm sorry, and I'll say this in your you know face, what, homeboy. You know because I hated he the like, fuck out of him. We could do a charity event and let's fight, and then we'll donate that money. <laughs> I'm like, just tell me you want to fight me. Uh, so we can just do this. <laughs> okay. like, he was like, Nah, we we'll, we'll make a, a charity event. I'm like, just so like how he, how he told you in the beginning. Um, he used to coach me in soccer. <laughs> yeah, and he's always been this guy, the motivational speaker type of like. You know, uplifting person, you know? Yeah. And I was immature as fucking high school. Super immature. Still are. Fuck you. Fight, <laughs> <laughs> um, fight, fight, fight. <laughs> so, um, yeah, he would be like, oh, bro, like, you got, you got, uh, you got the spirit, you got the personality and this and that, just do it. And I was like, I was the, I was the starter since freshman. Varsity starter. So, so I, yeah. me quería mucho, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm like, who the fuck are you to tell me what to do type of shit like that? So I always hated the fuck out of him. And so later on in life, we met again, and I was like, you know what? This was chill as fuck, you know? I actually like, said that yesterday, huh? I didn't, I didn't realize. I didn't mm-hmm. realize that. Yeah, we talked about, actually, that yesterday, like, at fucking one thirty in the morning. We're like, bro, who would have thought that the power above would have put us in the same position together and this journey together? Mm-hmm. That if we were to tell anybody else that knew both of us, they'd be like, what the fuck? Like, how yeah. does that work? He's younger, you're older. Like, how does this work? And it's like, no, like, you really got to go through life see where your journey is see where you're headed to and then you'll you'll be surprised who you meet throughout that journey yeah because maybe and you got to be challenged yeah you know what i mean like you guys were challenged to like like this this little moment you guys had and then like you, mm-hmm. you went past that and then you were able to open your eyes really like oh man you, you're cool mm-hmm. yeah because i mean it you brought up you met them in ninth grade tenth grade and it's like i met him in high school but it's like all right Remember where you met this person that you're now sharing your life with? And it's like, when there was nothing. Yeah, yeah. There, there's not one thing to your name. There's not one soul in the world that knows who you really are. And there's nothing for you to offer them besides a friendship. And what's up, fool? Let's go with the hyenas after this. Mm-hmm. Like, that's all you can offer. He never told me that, by the way. He never but, told me that, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> but fast forward, it's like, nah. A friendship is what's worth even more than any any price, because whether this succeeds or not, like I know I got your back, you know I got my, you got my back, and that's what a lot of people just can't find yet. That person or that group of people that today or tomorrow social media turns off, who still fucks with you? Today or tomorrow, everything that you have going on goes down the drain. Who is still gonna be there to be like? Don't worry, bro. I got you. Let's roll through the punches. Yep. And it's, it's not just the saying that, oh, okay, I got you. Because many people can just say that. You know, it's like you said, we have challenges and we're like, I've showed up for him when, he, you know, he didn't really have anything. And he showed up for me when I didn't have anything. And it's like, they'll show up when you least expect them. And they'll show up when you don't have anything to offer. Yeah. And I'm there for you, bro. Yeah. And he was the one that started the podcast. I didn't even start it. He started it. And he told me about this podcast, and he's like, bro, to be honest, I don't have shit to offer you. He's like, I just need someone to roll with me. I need someone to be my real dog. I need someone to be with me 100%. And obviously, there was no no interest into me. You know, like, I was like, okay, I'm not going to get money out of this. I'm not going to get fame out of this. I was like, you know what? Fuck it. Let's do it, bro. Yeah. 
And that's when I was, we were like, all right, this is it. This is it. You know, like this is, we're doing this hundred percent. I'm I got, I got your back. You got my back. And this is, this, that's where we're like, oh shit. Okay. We really got each other's back type of shit. You know? Yeah, man. That's beautiful. So, <laughs> I'm not I made this dude cry at one in the morning. I know that for a fact. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not crying. We're just going to take a break. So I go to the restroom real quick and we'll be chilling. And you know what? Like, I think they need to fix that kind of like filtering system on uh, the DMs because I have like, Personal, hello, and then hello, another hello. one's like requested, and then there's a separate one that's like general. general. Yeah. And the other ones, like they get hidden, and then I have to swipe all the way down to the bottom and then goes to the, the view hidden ones. Yeah, I was, I was in the trash. I was in the trash part. <laughs> I didn't part. put you there. Instagram <laughs> did, bro. I was in the deleted folder yeah. already. Like, do you sure you want to watch this and read this? But um, here, last part. And, um, yeah, I want to show you, bro. So you see, so you see. Oh, no, 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 how far I was in the DMs. Like, so here's the right. So that's primary. primary. That's general. This is channels. Now that they added, and then requests. You can see all requests right here. But then there's hit and see like you have to tap it quick. And now there's like a whole thing of like just another folder. Jesus. Almost Christ. like if it's like spam, you know. And I think I found you guys. <laughs> He found us in the spam folder. I don't, I don't know why. I don't know why Instagram does that. <laughs> he was like, but anyways, I took you out, put you in primary. And now okay, we're here. perfect. Ama, lo hicimos, por favor. Muchas gracias. We made him out. Yes, we made. Yeah, I want to shout everybody out right now. <laughs> but I'm a camera right now, man. And like I was saying, it, it's. I, t I always say you have to be in person to feel. The energy to actually see the reactions, and I, f I feel and and honestly, like you're coming from a place in your life where you battle through stuff yeah. personally, that you may have lost yourself in a journey in the journey, and right now you're finding what we call and what this chapter is called is peace. Mm -hmm. So, if you could share with us a little bit, like. What did it take for you to get to this position right now? Um, well, yeah, uh, it was hitting those challenges. It was um, learning that things are going to be okay at the end of the day. Um, you know, growing up as such a, like, fearful kid, you know, I told you a little bit about how, like, yeah. you know, they were just like, I'm going to hell. <laughs> you know, so there's just these moments, man, where, where you get older and – you start to pay attention at all the times that you've ever had moments of panic and and fear. And then right before you do that thing, you realize, like, oh, man, everything was okay. But it's it's remembering that. Like, remember who you were. Remember that little bitch you were. No, <laughs> that, that little person you were that, that, that was putting fear inside you. And it wasn't until you went through that, like, adversity. And you're like, oh, man, see, everything was okay on the other side. And imagine if I didn't take this leap. Imagine if I didn't take this, you know, imagine if, if I did listen to comments like, well, you, you should give up right now. Like, oh, dude, this is terrible. Imagine if I did listen to some, some of my deals that are like, you know, like, oh, Mijo, you can't be posting this stuff. You're going to get your ass kicked, you know. I, I didn't care, you know, like, I, 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 I looked at those moments. I, I did care for a little bit, like, but then I was like, okay, I'm going to go for it. So it's through trial um, that you see things that, um, that later bring you peace because you're like, I've been here before. Like, this is my confidence now. Yeah. Oh my, like, shit, like my confidence is so much better because I've gone through these moments before. I've been in this fearful, scared place. And then on the other end, like, it turned out even better than what I thought. Mm. There's even times where like, you know, things that, that I've done in my life where I've, I've fucked up. And I, I tell myself, I'm like, run just run away from it I'm like, or what you could do <laughs> here's a crazy idea run towards it and solve it but nobody wants to do that because that's hard that's hard to do um but i've done it a few times before and every single time i go into that now i think no 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 there's gonna be there's gonna be some, a, a learning moment here so i better i better soak it in and i think that is what I'm the most excited to teach my kids about, you know, like to grow these two little men, like two little boys and some men that like they need to learn like, hey, you know, like especially as a dad or as a man, like you're going to go through some tough shit. Like yeah. it's 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 hard for a guy 
you know, growing up, like you do go through a lot of shit talking, everyone blah blah, and you got a ha ha, whatever, yeah. And we do, you know, like we did that like in high school and everything, like like we were off the thing. biggest shit talkers, you know, and we learned it from like our tios, our family members. Yeah. That's why we, yeah, that's Está llorando? yeah. Mama. Okay, okay. Why are you crying? Uh, what's that? Like, <laughs> Chocolate bunny? You, like, <laughs> if, if you're crying, ¿Quieres que llores más? ¿Quieres llorar más? And Ahorita te doy razón, mira. I'll give you, I'll give you reason yeah, to yeah, cry. cry yeah. you that's know? like a big, that's a big thing in, in our culture. Yeah. You can't be vulnerable because you're weak. Mm-hmm. You can't start crying and, and you can't acknowledge that you're depressed, even though you don't know it. You can't acknowledge yeah. anxiety. You yeah. can't acknowledge. No, it's all in your head, bro. bro. Yeah. Okay. Nah. Get, get, get. Get? Nah, get nah. depression. Nah, nah. Get depression. Yeah. Yeah. But it's until now, and this is the thing about us now, about me now, it's like, embrace this. Mm-hmm. You, you feel anxious. You feel a little sad. You feel a little, a little on edge. Embrace it. Why? Let's talk about the why. Why do you feel like this? What got you this, to this point? And, I, and once you figure out that answer, then we can work on the solution. Yeah. You can't work on a solution without knowing the exact cause of this, right? Yeah. It's like trying to make an equation with no, no numbers in there. Yeah. You don't, you don't know the fucking answer. You're just going to guess it every single time. You have a problem in front of you. Mm-hmm. Like, how, how else are you going to yeah. solve it? Or you can, like I said, you can either run away from it or you can go through it. What, at what moment did you realize mental health, feel mental health, acknowledge that, <sighs> hey, your mental health is a thing? Cause I, for for me, I didn't know mental health until 2020, 2021. Yeah, I was like, yeah, what? That's what it's called. That's mm-hmm. why I'm crying every day without knowing why. Yeah, or things that just like get you emotional. Yeah, like you know, yeah, fucking dog. Okay, that's something else. No, because what, what, I am legend, and I am legend. Will oh, Smith okay. kills his uh, dog because he's infected. That's just being like, sensitive. Yeah, he's just crying. I'm like. <laughs> the fuck bro like don't kill it <laughs> yeah 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 it, it that's when i acknowledge i'm like all right why why am i driving listening to music why am i crying mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Why, what is this isn't that funny how it just it, it hits you one day you know like there's just something that happens and you're just like the fuck <laughs> you know so like for me one, one moment that i had here come the tears no <laughs> Dude, no, what, what, I know, right? But what, one moment that I had for me one time was like, um, <clears throat> here we go. One moment that I had for me was um, I was working as a server. And, you know, you have your little computers and you're punching shit in. And I saw this dad with like his kid and they're, they're watching TV and they're, you know, he's explaining to him, they're watching baseball and explaining to him like, you know, why the kid was out and like the, the guy was out and why he's just going through like this whole process. And you can tell like he was just so. Passionate about it. Passionate about teaching his kid this. And he was, you know, he was he was talking to him. And as a kid, I, I think sometimes I, I felt very much ignored. You know, as a kid, like, he's kind of like, yeah, you let them go do what they want to do. But then seeing other parents that, like, actually were so involved with their kids. And he was just like, all right, son, so you see how you did just that? Okay, so now that's an out. Oh, that, okay, now that's a slider, blah, blah. And I'm sitting on the computer like this, like, you know, just looking down. I'm like, must be nice, you know? <laughs> I'm like, Damn. And in a little moment, like I was like, man, good, good for him. Yeah. He's gonna, he's gonna have that confidence that I didn't have growing up, you know. So I was like, damn, that's nice. And it's just little things like like that that you're, you're talking about, like mental health. And I'm like, oh shit, like what's happening right now? You know, the entire day, like I was just like, just like off. You know, I was going to my table, I was like, hey, how you guys doing? My name's Eric. Blah blah blah. And I, I just kept thinking about, you know, and I kept looking over at that table and just seeing that kid. And his smile, and I was like, damn. So is that some, something you were just missing? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it was, it was one of those things where I'm like, it's okay that I'm, I'm feeling this way. It's okay that I'm emotional about it because I'm going to be that same dad. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, man, you are, and you are. Yeah. You're, I just need to learn baseball. You know, no. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, and see, that's that's one of the things with me. It's like I can get emotional, deflects, but like I always I deflect quick, with some yeah. type of comedy. That's just that's just how I've always been. No, but mm-hmm. I mean, it's it's so true because you know I don't even know baseball. And I'm trying to teach my kid how to play baseball. Right <laughs> I throw a ball, whatnot. Right now, we're he, my yeah. my son is, is three, and we put him in t-ball, and like I coach already high school kids, bro, and so like what I'm trying to teach him, which is awesome, by the way. Yeah, thank you. Uh-huh. And I'm trying to teach him. Like my patience is is small, right? Because I've never taught little kids, <laughs> but this kid was like, 
Daddy, I'm tired. <coughs> I'm like, the fuck you talking about? Yeah. <laughs> he was like, I just want to sit down. I'm like, no, like, continue. I'm not dragging him, and he's crying. I'm just like, ooh, here we go. Mm-hmm. And I'm just like, all right. And then, and, like, his mom talks to him really, like, hey, like, and she put it like an imaginary, like, situation, like, hey, in order for you to do this, you got to protect the crane. He loves cranes and stuff. Yeah, he's yeah, like, yeah. if you do this and you're going to protect it and you're going to break it out of this, and he's like, okay. And I'm just like, what the fuck? Like, like what the hell just happened? You're talking about cranes. I'm over here talking about motivation. <laughs> yeah. and you got to play. And he doesn't want to. And I'm just like, yeah. It's just that, like, you know, just wanting to be that parent or that dad. That um, maybe, unfortunately, we couldn't get it because how we talked about before, like, they were just in a different life, mm-hmm. a different area, a different moment. I saw that. You guys were talking about that on another clip. Yeah. Where, and it's like, you don't yeah. you don't blame them for that, bro, because oh, that's yeah. all really they knew. Yeah, because, yeah. I mean, my dad has his business. I didn't, I didn't know you had to put in overtime to be an entrepreneur. I'm <laughs> yeah. just like, you, you, you got to work right now? Like, are you serious? Yeah. And how you said, like, going to games and seeing dads coach their kids. And I'm just like, what? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But it's just like that now I understand. So now coming on Saturdays and, and my son has a game, I'm like, all right, well, I got to put everything after. And if it doesn't work after, then it's fine. It's not supposed yeah. to happen. It, I got to be here and I got to show him he's here. Because I was, I think I missed one one game. And then called him and he was just like, daddy, give him a whole rundown. I'm like, should have been fucking there. Like, that's where I need to be. Yeah. But it's just how you said, like, maybe we couldn't change it back then. Yeah. We can change that shit now. And, Absolutely. And be there now and showing them that we're there and we're leading. And, man, showing your, your twins that they have a hell of a father that has went from beginning stages to where he is now and striving and thriving not just for himself, but for his family. Yeah. So, like, that that's something, like, at one point, and I don't know if you have yet, and we love to do it here, but you got to give yourself those flowers of, like, mm-hmm. that pat on the back, like, lo hiciste. Mm-hmm. You're doing it. You're making it. When everybody maybe have counted you out, when you yourself may have counted yourself out, Yeah. you said, fuck that. I got to keep going. Yeah. And I think that's... um to add on to what you're saying is like you find peace in those moments. Um, you know, having the moments where you, you talk about your dad, just like, oh, he was trying to become an entrepreneur, blah, blah. It's not until you get older, you know, there's maybe a little moment in there where you got a little bitter, like you could have wanted more dad time. Yeah. But then you see everything else afterwards and you're like, oh, and I think that is peace. Yeah. You know, I see I'm, I'm upset at my dad growing up the entire time, not being there for me. But then like I get older, I'm like, oh, my, my, my dad actually had like, you know, bipolar disorder, blah, 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 you know, like, so there's little things that I'm like, oh, man, poor guy, like, what, what did he have to go through, mm-hmm. you know, and that's where, again, I think you start taking yourself out, and you become, like, a little more selfless, and, you know, right, to, right at the beginning, you said, what, what is love, and I, and I think it's that, it's, it's understanding other people, and then, like, making peace with that, um, and then doing your best to, you know, not be so selfish, and put others before you. Can you, put think, this, can you put this in the same sentence of forgiveness, learning how to forgive? Oh, man, 100%. Yeah. I think once you understand other people's pain, then yours becomes less. I'm not saying it goes away completely, mm-hmm. but yours becomes less. Once you hear someone else's stories, you know, they do it in, a, they do it in anime all the time. They got, you know, I don't yeah. know if anybody watches anime, but like, you know, like they, they go through this arc of like this like super bad guy that they build up yeah. and then I don't know where they just zoom into his eyes and he's like, <laughs> and they just take that little fool back when he was a little moral, you know, and how he was just kicked. In the bottom. He was just, just, yeah, and I'm sitting there like, I know Japanese now. <laughs> but they're going through all that, bro, you know. watching Dragon Ball Z all over again. Yeah, 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 yeah you know. Exactly. Naruto, whatever, you know, uh, they, they they go through these, like, story arcs, and then all of a sudden you're like, man, now, I'm, now I feel bad for the bad guy? <laughs> like, nah, he was the enemy. He was the... Nobody understood this yeah. dude, you know? But that's that's just our perception. Like, sometimes we need to kind of step out of that. We need to snap out of it because we're so quick to... We've learned really quick how to hate, yeah. 
and immediately kick people off. You know, you're done. True. And so, anyways, yeah. It's, it's, it's for <laughs> forgiveness. What is, what is that? Forgiveness, yeah. I'm forgiving you, not for you, but for me. It's a it's a personal because it, yeah, thing. because then you get you get a sense of anger, you a resentment, and you grow mm. up and you go through life. As soon as you hear the name or you hear whatever involving yeah. that person or situation, like you, your attitude changes. And what a lot of people don't understand is like, as soon as you let that happen, that means that still has control over you. Oof. That's the thing. Yeah. I don't want not, I don't want nothing to have control over my life and and my emotions emotion like that like i don't because as soon as i let somebody else control that like then who am i yeah like you got to sit down and ask yourself who am i when no one's around Mm -hmm. and it's just like do you like that person or do you love that person do you support them or are you hating that person it's it goes to like a simple question that i think anybody should ask whoever you look up to whoever you love ask are you happy with your life? And if you, if, unfortunately, I, I, I feel like a lot of people just like, now nah, I would change this. Now nah, I would change this. I would change that. So things happen. But I would want to ask you that. Are you happy, content with your life where you're at right now? Yeah. Yeah, I'm very happy. Um, I'm very happy because of... Um, the love I have around me and the peace that I've made with things that used to anger me and don't anymore. Um, which is a very hard spot to get to. Cause there's a lot of people just like anybody, you know, you feel like have wronged you or have done th- terrible things to you. Yeah. Um, but you get to a point where you're like, all right, I've made peace with that. And honestly, I, I wish the best for those people that have caused harm in my life. And that's, it's weird to say that out loud, to be honest. And it's not like, oh, yeah, look what I did. <laughs> but it really is one of those type of situations where like, damn. Um, yeah, even me saying that right now, like it was, it was I'm sorry, it's, it's still new to me even saying that right now. Um, because I, I am happy. Obviously there's things that I would want more, you know, cause that's, that's how we live life. We always want more, Yeah, you great. know, but with right now, the time being right now, I'm very happy. And very grateful for what I have. And um, yeah, I, I, I love those around me very much. So that, and everyone's good. So that, that alone make me happy. I'm, I'm going to, I think this is where I'm going to. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's going to hit you with I'm the good right on the, now. I'm going to kick you right now. Oh, <laughs> perfect. We, I stepped into a trap is what he's telling yes, me. Yes, you did. It's, and right, I, I love this question, and it's a repeated question we've always asked, but it's because a lot of people have never asked themselves. If you would talk, if you would talk to your younger self that's not confident, that is struggling to finding himself who he is, maybe in a just lost, what would you tell that younger Eric right now? I feel like I've... Um I've asked myself this, but a long time ago. Um, All right. This fool just walked up to me, staring at me. And I'm just like, don't freak out. I'm from the future. There's no flying cars yet. (laughs) I need you to relax. He's like, I have a Toyota. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Start 60-second clip videos. Call it TikTok. No, <laughs> he's like wrong the idea, wrong the idea. <laughs> I'm just giving him like a, you know, a, uh, World Series 2020 Dodgers. Uh, put all your money on that. Sorry, right, bro. I know, I know, it's a, it's a good question, serious. But um, I'd probably just tell him like, shit, man, because confidence was was something I I worried a lot about. Um, obviously, you're gonna want to tell your younger self things like, it's gonna be okay. Yeah. You know, you're gonna be just fine. Um, I'm going to tell him, oh man, you're going to fuck up a lot, but at the end of it, you're going to be happier, um, through that and use whatever you've learned and share that with other people. And I wouldn't change a thing. 
I love that. I love that. Hell bro. yeah. Hell yeah, I love that. You saw, but you saw how he deflected Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, <laughs> saw, I saw it with the jokes. I saw funny, it with the jokes. And then he, he, he brought it right back around. Yeah. But it's just the type of persona. It's the type of person you are. That it, it's just like, it's just like the normal question. Like when they ask us, hey, you good? Ah, no, my man. Yeah. Hell yeah, I'm good. And then like, are you ready? Nah. <laughs> <laughs> I just had to say that first. Yeah. But it's just, it's life, man. And, and it's, where life gets us to, it it knocks us it knocks us on our ass, kicks us when we're down, and sometimes we just don't know if we're gonna fucking get up. Yeah. And and I've been there, and I'm sure you've been there, and Dylan has been there, where we're just like, nah, there's no more. Like this is it. Like it's cool. I'm fine. But then you get an extended hand. And it's not from someone around you. It's from someone higher power than us. That 100%. says, don't worry. Yeah. I got you. And until you surrender, until you believe. That was the right word. I love, I love that for surrender. your day. Yeah. Thank you, bro. You, I love you, that. You got to surrender because we get so hard-headed in what we, shouldn't, what we shouldn't feel like, what we shouldn't be looking like. We get so surrounded and, and fluctuated with all this information at the end of the day, all we had to do was just put our hands up. Yeah. And I said, hey, man, I'm here. I know I had to be here first, and now I'm here. Please help me. I yeah. need help. I need you to lead me into wherever I need to go. And to wherever you're going through that journey and you fall into that journey, mm -hmm. you know, you're going to look back. And you're going to be like, damn. Yeah, man. This is what it feels like. A lot of times we want to have control. And whenever we you. don't have control over something, we tend to freak out. Yeah, you know? that's that's the thing not not having control is one of the scariest things True. ever mm -hmm. and it's just like how i said putting your just surrendering so sur let go of that machismo letting go of that of that hard like shell that you have over because you feel like you need to protect it yeah like no man there's no <clears throat> there's no need yeah it's okay if people are gonna people are gonna come and do you wrong no matter what happens no matter what True. stage in your life you are in there's always gonna be people that prey on on givers mm -hmm. and it's up to you to handle it right life is 10 percent what's what's done to you and 90 percent how you handle it mm -hmm. and that's where we go it, that's why like i'm this what what has happened today it was meant to be long before we even knew it yeah and now we're just here now we get to enjoy this story time we get to enjoy the funny moments. We get to enjoy the serious times because now we're all in a place in our own life that we get to share this and we get to share with the world. And now there's going to be little cholos <laughs> that are going to relate to it. And there's going to be a lot of Latinos, Hispanics, and every other race that, that relate to the stories, to the quotes, to the advice that we talked about and not we... It's not us talking out of our ass. It's us talking out of what we fucking went through. Experiences. Yeah. Experiences. And that's what's just so powerful. We talk from experiences, not from things we haven't been through. Because, yeah. you know, we can't give those type of advice. Right. I can't tell you how to lose weight. No, my mess. I've been obese since I was 10. <laughs> that's what the doctor said. For us, was gotcha. That was gotcha. Was gotcha. He's like, Your doctor told you that? Yeah, he was like, oh, your son's healthy, but he's a little overweight. Like, I've always huh. been skinny, homeboy. I'm like, no. Nah. I haven't, bro, sadly. <laughs> sadly, not sadly. Dad bod. Dad bod. Dad bod, yes. Embrace it, bro. I'm, you know, I, I did for a while, and then I'm like, all right, now I'm back at, back in the gym, so. That's right. I'm torn. That's right, that's right. I'm like, oh, no. The abs are coming back. <laughs> oh, no. This is gross. Hey, OnlyFans. Oh, yeah, that's right. That's another stream. Of <laughs> there you go. <laughs> hey, yo. Whoa, you think it's a whole other level. Holy <laughs> shit, okay. No, I don't know what you're thinking of, but some people have OnlyFans for business. That's true. I've seen UFC fighters now have like OnlyFans. I don't know what they're doing. <laughs> they be knocking like, motherfuckers out. Of there. All right, they're like, all right, today we're gonna get uh, in the ring, but there's mud and we're, there's no clothes. <laughs> <laughs> you want to get butt naked and wrestle? And in the rain? <laughs> what? This is outdoor <laughs> arena. Subscribe. <laughs> four ninety nine. Yeah, only four ninety nine. <laughs> And, hey, and we're running a special today. <laughs> so if you're watching, right here's the code. Subscribe to it. Here's the code. The code, <laughs> here's the code right here. You know, 
And in the next 20 minutes. It's going like, to be like the people that, like on Twitter where they tell you click on the link and then boom, Jesus Christ pops up. You got to go. You're scared to go to hell, bro. I'm telling you. We're all, I'm pretty sure we're all scared, like homeboy said. Now I'm going to see you there, dude. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to see you. Nah. Um, we're, we've always been a quote-based podcast, man. And, mm-hmm. and this is where a lot of people love it. They, they relate to. Or this is just a video that's going to go viral. And your voice is going to be shared among people. But um, has there been a quote that you have resented with, that you remember either right now or throughout throughout your journey in life in general? Bro, I write down a lot of my... You mind if I... Go ahead. Go yeah. my, <laughs> I was about to say, you want to... Because I was like, I can, I can think of one right now, but I'll probably just be repeating myself from something I said earlier. Google, quote of the day. Hang on, quote, Google. <laughs> just, um, lessons. Yeah, like I, look, I have it. Life oh, oh he, he wrote that down. I can see the notes. So this is I something I, I did uh, in 2021, lessons for my kids. Oh. Let me just find the... That's one. one second. You're gonna choose the mm-hmm. right one. Mm-hmm. So like uh, Michael Scott, you guys ever watch? Uh, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Where, where mm-hmm. he where he calls uh, Pam to to tell the funniest joke during Chili's. He goes, no, no, not not that one, not that one. It's not as funny. As <laughs> yeah. no, no. <laughs> well, um, I, I'm gonna try to find the joke. I'm trying to find a joke. But yeah, that was funny. That was no, no, he, he has a he, he. I think he has a. Damn, it's been a while since I watched it. Since they took it off of Netflix, I haven't watched it. Do you have a quote there for today? Um, I saw this quote on Instagram earlier, and um, it says, it's not a flex to be the smartest motherfucker in the room. It's not important to be the smartest? It's, it's not a flex to be the smartest oh, guy in the room. Because you always got to surround yourself with people that are greater minded than you, you know? And if you're the smartest dude in the room, who are you going to learn from? Which is no one. So, yeah. Wow. Well, I like it. I, I, I can't step on my left, but I'll step on my right. <laughs> we'll fix it in post, bro. <laughs> it's all right. You'll learn it one day. All right. Did you get yours? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Let's hear um, this. It's going to be very simple. Very, very, very simple. Um, helping others is the most fulfilling thing you can do in your life. And I say that because everything that I've always done or I felt like I've even put in my videos, like I've always wanted to help somebody, even if it was with a laugh, even if it's somebody that, that needs something, um, just help moving out, you know, like little things like that. Like I feel like that always goes a long way and be nice to everybody. Don't be a dick. Um, that's something that I've learned really quickly. Who can I be friends with or not, especially in this business? You know, you meet some people and you, you hear the way they talk about others yeah. and you're like, Oh man, they, they're definitely talking the same mm-hmm. about me. So just be on the lookout for things like that. You know what I mean? No, no. Don't be a dick. <laughs> Don't be a dick. It's how, it's how we said earlier. Be mindful and careful who you share good news with. Yeah. And be careful who you share your greatest moments with. Because not everybody around you in this moment of time may be the ones that have the best intentions for you. And then you get into that loneliness stage. Mm-hmm. But True. they say, once in your lonely stage, you find out almost everything about yourself. What's what's your quote, homeboy? It was that fool? <laughs> no, 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 no. No, that was not the quote. Cool. No. He was just going straight off the bat. <laughs> no, I, I think it's just that. Like, just how we said before, everything we, we've talked about right now, you know, it leaves us, at least me, in a, in a sense of you're going to go through some shit in your life. It's going to be good. You're going to have high moments, but then you're going to have those low moments. And in those low moments that you live through, like, you're going to learn everything about yourself. You're going to learn that you are confident. You're going to learn that you are powerful and that you can persevere this that's happening right now to you. You can get over this mountain that seems impossible to climb. And that mountain that seems impossible is just life. But once you get to the top, Guess what? There's another one to get to. And you have to be willing to and you have to be excited to climb it. Cause again, you're you're gonna be at the top of one mountain, but that's gonna be the bottom of the next one. And you have to be excited to get to see where you're at. Again, this is yeah. this is a recap of everything that's happened today. Yeah. From watching you 
to now here sharing sharing the episode with you, the show with you, mm-hmm. and be able to share these stories and be able to share these quotes with the rest of the world. And man, probably just another one, man. Yeah. Life is unexpected. Think the highest of you, believe in yourself, and you never know what six months will come in with and what yeah. years to come with. Shit. Yeah. Maybe maybe in a year fool will be in his movie, fool, in his show. Yeah, there you go. Get your shit together, we'll see. fool. Get your shit together. <laughs> I'll be the I'll be the new Stevie Brown. Uh, no. <laughs> I, I don't think I, I don't think Uh-oh. I can feel those shoes. I don't you gotta know. make a call. Hey, bro, <laughs> you're out. I'm sorry. <laughs> Hey, uh, make sure nah, you but a, a good quick. question I, I want to leave everybody off with. Okay, let's if see, I can, let's see, let's see, go for it. please. It's something I asked earlier. It's what kind of person do you want to be from here moving forward? Do you want to be a good person? Do you want to be a great person? And I think that alone, like in that, you'll find a lot of your answers. And you know, really research it. Like, okay, what what is what does this look like? Yeah. And for me, and then sometimes I think that alone has its own challenge. It's like, oh, well, if I was good, I'd do this. I'd, I'd be, you know. Then okay, you know, go for it, man. I love today, Try it. bro. Yeah, like, I love today. today. Today was amazing. Today has been great. I hope you guys all get to take whatever you take from this episode. True. Good, bad. You want to be like us? Cool. If you don't want to be like us, <laughs> cool. Be it's, like you. That's exactly. what. That's what matters. Exactly. But appreciate everybody subscribing, following, follow all the platforms. Man, Subscribe, a- share, like. You yeah, already know, homeboy. Yeah, don't is, miss, this, don't miss those out. This is a this is a Tulsa Life podcast, man. Let's go. At beginning beginning words and what we base it. It's a Tulsa Life. Mm-hmm. Share the highest moments with the people that mean the most. Exactly. So if yes. you're listening to this in the morning, yes. take a take a sip of your coffee. Take a little and toast. If you're an alcoholic, then here we go. No, uh, <laughs> that's that's tequila in this water bottle, by the way. Man. <laughs> hey, Tulsa Life, bros. Cheers. Here we go. Salud, salud. Salud. Ah, Arriba, bagos. <laughs> Ah, tú sabes, let's go, baby.